Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text of this morning of our consideration is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We read from the 8th chapter the very familiar verses from 28 and following. We know in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own Son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine, nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is God's word. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, perhaps a portion of scripture that is of great comfort to many, many people. It perhaps ranks up there with the 23rd Psalm for giving comfort to people. Especially like the thought of that in all these things we are more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us the victory. The thought of nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And those who know God and believe in him and put their hope in him. All things will work together to produce a good. These words were originally written to a congregation of people, if you will. A majority of whom were slaves. Others of which were common lay people that were under the tyranny and the yoke of the Romans. <clears throat> These were people that there was no such thing as everyone achieving the Roman dream. They were not promised all kinds of things by their government that they would be, have this and they would have that and we'll provide all these things for you. They were promised that if they did what they were told, they wouldn't be imprisoned or, or, or killed. And so they lived their lives never anticipating anything greater than what they were doing. Constantly angered by the fact that those people living in their fine mansions and those dreaded Romans imposing their taxes and their will against us Constantly kept them under their thumb, and they were an oppressed people. And if God is so God and so good, then why doesn't God look at what's happening to us? And not only that type of oppression, they were affected by the things of nature as well. There were famines. People were starving. Were those Romans starving? No, it was us who were receiving the brunt of that. Why does God allow that? Families were being torn apart. If you had some real healthy, strong children, they'd be snatched up by someone to be taken as either a slave or to work in someone's court. And there wasn't a thing that the people could do about it. Unless they too wanted to be tossed into prison or executed. Doesn't the God who we worship see our plight? Doesn't he see what's going on? 
And so when Paul writes to them and he says we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, he is like a lot of people. I don't see the conquering. I don't see what's going on here. I don't see this as being something that's of any benefit. And that's when faith begins to kick in. Because we have those same questions at times. And people in general have those same questions. And we begin to realize that it was never God's plan that we have a, an enjoyable, wonderful life here on earth. We find peace and contentment in our Lord, and that produces a wonderful, joyous life as we serve the Lord. He never intended that you should climb the social ladder, either be it of prestige and honor and responsibility or through wealth and such like that. He never promised anything of that. But he did promise you an eternity in heaven. And he showed you that his glorious purpose was that he would send his son to die for our sins and to make certain that salvation is ours. This text, we could preach 50 sermons on it, and I'm probably on about 10 of them right now using this text as a Sunday morning sermon text. And so we, we picked just little pieces of it this morning. And I start off by just the, the, the couple words we know. What do we know? We know that there are good times in life and there are bad times in life. We know that there are days of health and, and feeling good. And we know that there are days where our health is not very good. And we get those dreaded diagnoses. And we find out that we're just not as able to do what we used to do and the hearing gets a little bad and the steps are a little bit more guarded. And there's a few more aches and pains when we get up in the morning. And sometimes we're disoriented and such. We know all those things. But we know in whom we believe. And that comes to the second little phrase. We know that in all things God. In all things God. He is a part of your marriage. He is a part of your financial affairs. He is a part of your work. He is a part of your relationship between parents and children. He is a part of your relationship with your friends and your neighbors and your coworkers. <laughs> He is involved in your employment. He is involved in your health setbacks. He is always there to help. And we know that when one year the droughts come, followed by the next year when the floods come, followed by the next year when everything is good, and there's something else gets in the way, we know that God is involved in all those things. And he works together for our good. There are, there are so many examples I could give to you as illustrations to that. Let me just use one. When I was bickering in Phoenix, Arizona, I had an opportunity to visit the shut-ins and the elderly and such. And one of the families that was always on my route and it was always around my all this and, and such to visit during the course of the week. This is a, a wonderful family. They had owned a farm. They had owned, I don't know, what was it, three, four, five thousand acre farm. When they came there, it was outside Phoenix. When I visited them years later, it was now right in the midst of the big city. Sun City was to the west and Peoria and all those places now. Now if I went back there, there's probably even more that extend further out. And here was this huge farm. They owned all these acres. I wouldn't even begin to imagine how many millions of dollars that the land was worth. Let me tell you the story behind this family. They're from North Dakota. <coughs> They were scratching and struggling to make ends meet. 
And this year they had a wonderful crop and that was going to help pay off all kinds of bills. It was going to enable them to continue to farm and everything was going to be all right because this crop was going to bring in all that they needed. And they were so excited about it. And they were ready to harvest the crop the next morning and the Lord sends a snowstorm and they lost their entire crop. And they had nothing but the bills, foreclosure on their land and their property and, and everything. And so they said, we have to move. And they moved to the Phoenix area. And that's what started the whole cycle of events that would come to be where I met them and knew them. The grandparents often told me about that. Almost every time I visited, that's who I went to visit, the children and their families would always be around whenever I was there. And they'd tell me about that story and how they lost everything, but in the end, God directed them to where they had so many blessings. And they saw the hand of God at work in that. Because of stories like that, you and I know God. And we know that God works in all things. And all things cooperate. Translated works together. Really the word is cooperates. Everything cooperates in God's will for us. And we view that in life. And that helps us to understand that, yeah, there are going to be some really wonderful times. And there's going to be some times when we're just knocked off our feet and knocked down and just life's complicated, it's messy and it's difficult and so on but we know that in all things God is working that gives us such comfort another phrase in our text if God is for us who can be against us well let me tell you who can be against us there's all kinds of people that can be against you. There are people out there that just hate the Christian faith. And we lived in certain areas of the world. We would have to be very careful if we weren't executed or martyred for the cause of being a Christian. We know that the world is enticing. You, you see it so easily drifting into the realm of the church. And church is trying to more and more emulate the world around us so as to be able to win the young people and win certain groups of people to, to bring them in. Um, when the church begins competing with the world in that regard, the world's going to beat us every time. And so we re realize that it's not our purpose to try to be like the world. It's not our purpose to remain faithful to the word of God to preach that word faithfully, and to administer the sacraments as God has so commanded us. The devil is always there. The devil knows our weak spots. He knows exactly what can cause you to stumble. He knows exactly how he can get you to doubt God, to be angry with God, to, to curse his name. And finally, there's my own flesh. Filled with greed and envy and hatred and a lack of empathy and concern for people. All types of those things are at war within me. But that's where the Lord says, I will always be with you. You are more than conquerors through us. Why? Because I have called you from eternity. Yeah, we, we struggle with the doctrine of predestination and, and election and so on. We think, well, why did God choose from eternity me and he seemingly didn't others? That's not the point. We don't need to go there. He tells us that because he has chosen us and he has been in our hearts from eternity. He has called us to be his. 
and not simply just set us apart or call us there, but he said, I am sending my son to die for your sins so that in Christ Jesus, you shall be glorified. How often do we think of our lives and think of our person as some glorified being? Just the opposite. We think we're some horrible sinner that when we are measured up against God's law, we don't even come close, and we would be absolutely correct in that assumption. And that but God sent his son. So you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ because he has conquered sin, death, and the devil. Your flesh and the world and those that want to destroy your faith. If God is for us, once again, language, if God is for us, almost seems as though there's some doubt there. Well, it's also translated sense. And that's the meaning here. Since God is for us, then who can be against us? For those who love God, not some idea I have in my mind of who God is, not some figment of my imagination, some supreme being. Yeah, I have a belief in a supreme being too. I have a belief in some greater force out there. God has told you who he is. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. Without Christ, you have no God. There is no God apart from the one true God. And so all these people in the world that are going out there and having their holy war and having their God that's going to give them the victory over this great Satan, the United States, their God is no God. Because there's only one true God. And it's not a God that we make up. It is a God who's revealed himself to us. And so we grow in his grace. And we grow in the knowledge of who he is. And we grow in our acceptance of the fact that Jesus came to die for my sins. And faith clings to that. And therein lies the victory. There's a victory that we all have. There's a victory that the Lord has won for us. And so we can honestly say that in you, Christ, Jesus, my Savior, I am a victor. You have won for me the crown. You have laid that before me, and it is mine. And I realize that nothing can separate me from your love. Not all the things mentioned here, height or depth or this or that. <coughs> Those who belong to Jesus, those who believe in him, have life and salvation. And that's why this text is so comforting. For people who were oppressed, who saw no hope, the Lord says, don't put your hope in worldly things. Don't put your hope in treasures. Don't put your hope in that this next thing might be the one thing that makes my life, that makes it more enjoyable, and makes it more peaceful. You already have that. It's already yours. Maybe rather than searching after things, we need to kind of look at the things that we already have. And so it takes away all these little cliches about how we all deserve something better, and we deserve a better life, and we deserve this, and we deserve that, and, and so on and so forth. No, we don't. Because all that talk is simply looking at ourselves. It's sad that over time, all these motivational things that people use to kind of encourage one another, these are God. In all things, God. If it be God, God's will, things will go well. If it be God's will, this will happen. And it was God's will that this shouldn't happen. And it was God's will that I didn't get that promotion. I didn't get that added this or that. It was God's will that this illness didn't go away, and this affliction didn't go away. I am content, because I know God that you'll make it all work out right. And we'll glorify your name. 
because he did not create me so that I could have the most comfortable, peaceful life here on earth. He created me that I might be with you forever. And you have made that possible when you died on the cross to pay for my sins. That's why we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, because we already lived that victory. Amen.